Well, when we look at the solar system, uh, there is an amazing structure. We have the small telluric planet inside, and we have the big giant planet outside. Um, and I think this is a very important element to understand the formation of the solar system. And it has been used to develop a whole theory of how the planet has been formed. Well, the idea starts from the very beginning when you form a star, there is a lot of material around. And this material gets organized in the shape of a disk. It's called a protoplanetary disk. The reason why we have this is because there is a law in physics which is called the angular momentum conservation, which says that there is something that rotates a little bit. When it starts to shrink, then the rotation speeds up. When you speed up the rotations, practically, all the material is falling into the disk and you ended up with the rotating disk. So you have this at the beginning of the formation of the solar systems, and we do have picture of young stars where we see this. So everybody agrees that this is in a way the starting point when you form a planet. So when it becomes interesting is what is going on in the disk. So you have the stars and you have the disk. The disk has the same kind of ingredient than the stars. It means most of the disk is gas, the same gas you have in the sun, which is hydrogen, helium, practically, and then a little bit of uh, CO, um, most of it is it. And then the rest is a little bit of ingredients called silicates. We call them dust, just tiny stuff. And this is a disk. And what happened in this disk is all these materials start to glue together, they stick, there is no gravity, so they just, just meet slowly and just stick together very slowly. Well, if you look at the temperature in the disk, you understand that if you are very close to the star, it's very hot, it's very far apart, it's very cold. So there is a distance which you can compute that if there is some ice, or there is some water, depending if it's closer, it will become gas. If it's farther away, it will become snow. So there is what we call a snow line. There is a different. The snow line in the solar system, it's a bit beyond Mars, about. What happens is when you have snowflakes, we all know that the snowflakes, they just glue together very fast. It's very easy to make a snowball. Well, when you have just sand, like the, the, the sand you have on the beach, it's much more difficult to make them together. So what practically happens, in, in the solar system, all the part which is outside, when they have a lot of snow, snowflake, ice, that's what we call them, very rapidly, there is small core being built. We call that proto-planets. And these core, start to have gravity. They start to interact each other and to build bigger core. It is so fast, then this core becomes massive enough to start to accrete the gas which is there around. And that goes so fast that they do that before the gas disappear. So very rapidly, you form planets like Jupiter or Saturn. If you're too slow to do that, the gas just disappear because the gas is very unstable. So after about 20 million years old, when you have the star very young, the gas will be gone. So this is what happened in the center when you are closer to the star. There is no ice, so it's way too slow to build up the planet. They don't, they're not big enough so they cannot accrete the gas and they cannot build this together. So this theory is quite new. It's from a Russian physicist that came up with the first idea how to build up this process and to explain how we build up the planet, Safronov. It's called the Safronov theory. And this is the reason why we understand the solar system with the small planet inside and the big planet outside. 
Well, not the fun part of this is you can imagine the surprise we had when the first exoplanet that we found, another star, is a planet like Jupiter, but very close. There is no way to explain this planet with this theory. How could you form a gigantic giant planet attracting all the gas if you're so close? You're so close that there is no ice, it just melts, it vaporizes. And I was a big shock because the first detection of exoplanet, in a way, demonstrated that the theory was wrong or incomplete, say it this way. So it may work for the solar system, but it does not work for hot Jupiter. The fact we have found a lot of hot Jupiter, hot Saturns and Neptunes very close tells us that this theory that we're using for the solar system is just one of the many and it's way more complicated. So what are we missing here? Well, we're missing a couple of ingredients. Well, the first one we're missing is, well, all this is happening in a disk. So we have to think about what happens when you start to have a planet form in a disk. So all this is the gravity. So what will happen is, is a bit like when, when, you, when you move your hands into a, a pot of jelly, you will have a kind of a wave of gravity. So the planet will create a wave of gravity moving into the disk. And the disk, because there is a wave, will have some part which become denser than other part. So some part of the disk will become massive and will act on the planet. There will be a gravity interaction from the disk to the planet. And when you play all this, you realize that this is enough to move the orbit of the planet. The planet doesn't stay exactly where it is being formed. And this mechanism is known to be the migration mechanism theory. And that's a way to move the planet around. Well, the problem we have with this is the more you get closer to the star, the faster the migration comes. And then at some point you have to stop. Because if you don't stop, the planet is just going to dive into the star. So you have to have another mechanism here, which can be connected to the magnetic field of the star. When you get them closer, then you will start to see the magnetic field from the stars. And then that would kind of slow you down, like we have the magnetic break for, for the right wave, for example. There is also no disk inside, it's too hot. So maybe there is no disk, so maybe it doesn't work anymore, this theory. So there is a way to explain a bit what we do see. But that's not all of it. Because we know that the planets are not born alone. There is a whole system. In the disk is not only one planet being formed. There is another one, another one, another one. And all these planets, they are kind of talking together. There is a gravity here. And they may be unstable. Maybe one is pushing the other one. Another one is pushing the other one. So depending how they push each other, it can be quite dramatic. You can end up with a dramatic scenarios and they all moved around and then you start here and you end up with two planets expelled of the systems, one sent into the stars and then one or two remainings. Even worse, you can have a star a bit further out that still will affect the system very slowly, will come and push it every time, push it a little bit. So all this together makes that you have a lot of options to move around. So, so the big understanding or the big lesson that we learn with the discovery of exoplanet is when you form a planet, it doesn't mean you will stay where you are. You will be moving around. And, and this has inspired also the formation of the solar system because a couple of years after the detection of the first exoplanet, people start to think that maybe the solar system has not been formed the way it is now. It was from different locations and it has moved around. And there's a theory called the late heavy bombardment that just reshuffled a bit the position of the planet there and has changed the location of the planet and has removed a lot of the deadly asteroids we have. 
So you see the formation of a planet, it's a bit like uh, predicting the weather. I can tell you roughly that in winter it will be cold and in summer it will be hot, but to tell you exactly the weather that will be tomorrow or in a week or in a month is difficult because there's so many parameters, so many random that can happen, and that's the main lesson we've learned. There may be as much as different planet in the universe that ways to form them. And then the question is then, how rare are we? How rare are the solar systems? That's why we want to look for other planets. That's why we want to understand the formation, uh, formation scenario to answer how rare is the Earth.